Hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, listen, we are um, so glad you're here. If you're here for the first time or the first time in a long time, welcome home. It's great to have you here. Listen, we are in week four in our series called The Genesis of Family. We're talking about family, what it means to be in family, where family came from. We've been spending time in the book of Genesis, where family uh, originated. The word Genesis literally means the beginnings or the starting points or literally uh, where where things started. So in Genesis chapter one, we talked about uh, that the, where, where, where in the world family started, originated from. I said this phrase, I said it once, I'll say it probably every time I talk about family, just like singing joy to the world at Christmas. I will tell you this, that I believe God's original plan for family was and still is this, to form our identity and to reveal God to the world. God used the vehicle of family in a really unique way. For some reason, God chose family to reveal himself to the planet. He did it through Adam and Eve. He did it through Abraham and Sarah. He did it through uh, all sorts of vehicles, Mary and Joseph. Why did God choose a family to reveal himself to the world? I don't know, but he did. He chose family, right? Forever, God used family to reveal himself to the planet, right? God just didn't say for uh, uh, contrary to all of our superhero friends, God just didn't send some lightning bolt down from some crazy planet and say like, kabam, there's the answer. He didn't, he didn't do that. He literally said, I'm going to give the answer to man's biggest problem in family. You remember man's biggest problem, right? Man's biggest problem. Everyone seems to answer, ask that question. Man's biggest problem is simple. Man's biggest problem is God, if you love us, do something. Right, Every human asks that at some point, God, if you really loved us, why don't you do something? The answer to man's biggest problem came through family. God said, okay, I'll do something. I'm gonna send an answer. I'm gonna send my son through family. That's exactly what the answer was. God gave his answer to man's biggest problem in the context of family. That's what God's intention was. It's for us to begin to see his biggest answer to God's man's biggest problem was in family. Well, the ironic thing is the enemy knows that too. And he's been trying to twist and contort and redefine and do all the things that he's done in family. Why in the world does the devil care so much about family? Why does the devil care what family is or isn't or why it has to be this way or not that way? Why does he care all so much about that? I'll tell you why. It's because I believe with all my heart, the single most powerful institution on planet earth is and always has been the institution of family because it's the thing that changes things. Whether we like to believe it or not, it's what changes things. How do I know? Well, if I, here's how I know. It's so funny. I remember one time I was working, I worked for Costco for 11 years. I remember one time uh, I was going to do a, a series on something. And, and so I was going to do a man on the street interview of somebody. And so I went around the, the Costco warehouse interviewing people. And I was like, so tell me about your relationship with so-and-so. And, and it was just about family relationships. Tell me about your relationship with your siblings or tell me about your relationship with your mom. And so I, I finally was like, tell me your relationship with your dad. Woo! Struck a chord. People had some opinions about that. And I was like, wow, stepped on a landmine on a bunch of people. Because that seemed to bring up a lot of wounds. And I was like, wow. So everyone had some feels about the answer to that question. Well, some people were like, super, wow, it was really great. My relationship was awesome. A lot of other people were like, don't ever mention his name. And I was like, woo, I didn't. You did. But I was like... Okay, I'll step back, right? And my point is, is everyone's got a thing, right? Why are we so touchy about that stuff? Well, it's because it hits us right in the feels. Because God's intention was for it to get us in there. Because God wanted to change us, the devil wants to change it. Right? All right. Just so you know. God help us today as we spend a little time talking about family. Amen. Today I want to talk to you about family in a manner, maybe a part of family we don't spend a lot of time talking about in church. Wish we did, but we don't, but I'm gonna, amen? I want to talk to you about the rhythm of family because some of you have terrible rhythm. That was funny. That was a little funny. Come on now. I want to talk to you about the rhythm of family, right? Because I think we, uh, quite frankly, our family rhythms are off. 
We're terrible at our family rhythms. We spend one minute to the next being busier and busier than ever before. We, have, we wake up as parents and we somehow feel like our job is to make sure we manage our kids' lives. We're going to take our kids here and there and there and here and there and here and there. And unfortunately, um, you poor parents with kids that have social media and you have social media, I'm sorry. I'm glad we didn't have social media because people would tell on us for not taking our kids to everything. You guys get, you're like, well, our kids went to ballet and then soccer practice and then they went off to choir practice and then band. And it's like, you guys have to report on it all the time. Sorry, you guys are like, I'm a good parent because I do all the things and then I bought them new shoes. And you guys have to tell on yourselves and, and you're like a good parent if you don't. I always think to myself like, I'm so sorry. You guys, for some reason, feel like you gotta tell on yourselves for all the things that you do to everyone. And... um Yuck. But good for you, I guess. Blech. Sorry, but why? Who cares? But nevertheless, somebody does because you guys keep on doing it. But nevertheless, I, I, I'm, I'm just saying to you, like, somehow there's this crazy thing and expectations of people that have to know things about you and you think you got to tell them and whatever. But the pressure is insane. The management of our time is like we have to fill up 24 of these hours a day with things and be busy because then if we're not, we're not quality parenting. Can I tell you, that's a terrible idea. That's a horrible idea. We don't manage well. God set a rhythm in place. God's intention for our families was not supposed to be difficult. We, however, made it difficult like everything else. God's intention was that, by the way, God, God made life super easy Morning, evening, <laughs> right? Hot, cold, summer, winter, fall, spring. Like he made it super easy. And we're like, um, however, if we make it, uh, we just want to add to things. God, God made things super easy. We're the ones that make it weird. We think like we should modify everything. God didn't intend for us to modify anything. He, he made it super easy, Right? but we make our lives massively weird. Did you know that the average person in America today, the the average person in America spends over three hours per day on their phones and social media? Three hours per day. Did you know that the average American family, the average American family together spends meaningful time Monday through Friday, 37 minutes per day together as a family? Maybe. Maybe. And that's on a good week of quality time. The rhythm of family is so whacked out. God intended for sowing and reaping day and night, all the things. God's intention was for us to be super simple. A.J. Swoboda, he's an author, theologian, wrote in his book, Subversive Sabbath, talking about God rhythms. He was talking one time about him and his son. They they went to a swimming pool, his four-year-old, five-year-old son. There were things that dads and sons do because dads and sons are goofy. They were like, how long can we hold our breath, right? Because why not, right? And so they were like, hey, how long can you hold your breath, son? And how, dad, how about you? And so because that's what dads and sons do, right? So um, they, it dawned on him as that you can, you can manage life holding your breath. You know that? So, you know, like if you breathe in deep, you hold your breath, then let it out. Then do it again. <gasps> Hold your breath and let it out. <sighs> then breathe it again. <gasps> Hold your breath. Then let it out. You could do that for a long time and then you'll probably pass out. But you could do that for a long period. You could breathe. You could exist that way for a long period of time and then you'd probably pass out, hyperventilate, your head would get weird. Something would go wrong with your body. You could live kind of that weird breathing pattern, Right? Breathe in, hold your breath, pass it, breathe it out. For some period of time, you could do that kind of cycle. At some point, you would cause yourself to relax a little bit with a circular breathing, but then eventually you'd be like, it'd be so awkward. Breathe in, hold your breath, pass out, right? Or you could just breathe. You could just breathe the way you were designed. Or you could just do it, or you can manipulate it and do it yourself and do the weird breathing of breathing in, holding your breath as long as you can, and then blow it out and breathe it again and hold your breath, then then blow it out. Or you could just do it the way God designed you and just breathe in and breathe out. 
You know, God designed us to work six days and take one day off. It was supposed to be super simple, but we made it super weird. It was supposed to be super simple. Work six days, shut her down. And we're like, you should see the looks all over your faces. You look so confused. (laughs) What do you really mean, Lance? No, seriously, it was supposed to be that simple. Work six days, one day take, take it off. Uh, let, let, me, let, me, let me explain. I'll make this super easy. Look at Genesis chapter two. Oddly enough, it comes right after Genesis chapter one. Right? So God creates everything, Genesis chapter one. Like creates everything, sun, moon, stars, planets, air, everything. He creates it all. Get this, Genesis chapter two, verse one says this. So the creation of heavens and earth, everything in them was completed. On the seventh day, having finished his task, God rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and he declared it holy because it was the day when he rested from his work of creation. Crazy, right? Just a 10,000 foot view way up top. Listen to this. A couple, three things you can take away from this. Verse one, God completed everything in seven days or six days. He created it all. We didn't need any help. didn't need any modifications. God created everything. It was complete. Six days, he created it all. Yay. God did it. He doesn't need any of our help. Right? Number two, God rested. He didn't need to rest. Right? It's, it's kind of funny. I was thinking sometimes, um, sometimes we have to imagine God being a parent and us being toddlers. If you've ever been around a toddler, it's a lot like that. Right? So a toddler comes to you and says, I don't need a nap. As a parent, you're like, actually, you need a nap. As a parent, you're like, I would like a nap, but you actually need one. And you're like, um, yeah, but I don't need a nap. And you're like, no, you need a nap. And the toddler would be like, no, I don't need a nap. And you're like, no, you're going to take a nap because you need a nap. And the parent's like, I want a nap, but you're going to take a nap, right? That's kind of like our relationship with God. He's like, I don't need a nap. But I'm going to take a nap. I'm going to show you how to rest. Because God doesn't need a rest, but he's taking one to show us. Because trust me, God didn't need a nap. But God took a nap. Why did God take a nap? To show us how to take a nap. Yeah, that's good. And here's what we did. We kept our eyes open. <laughs> like a petulant child. Jeez. Number three, the seventh day was holy. He made it holy. Right? Can I just tell you this? Don't make it weird. He made it holy. What is holy? Holy just simply means set apart. Right? So he made, he made seven days, and one of them he made holy. What is holy? Holy just means set apart. Set apart from what? Set apart from the other six. It doesn't say he made them religious. He didn't make the seventh day religious. He just made it holy. He just made it set apart from the other ones. So there were six of them, and he made one of them set apart from the others. Right, So he, he didn't say like, hey, there's six of them and then one of them is super religious. He said he made six of them and one of them is set apart. For what? We're gonna find that out. But he said six of them are for something then one of them is to be made holy. It's set apart. It's another day, but it's set apart from six, right? He's trying to make it super simple for us. For us. He's trying not to confuse us. Amen? We're getting weird here. All right, so, by the way, it's kind of funny. Um, we'll, we'll unpack this a little bit. You'll see here in Genesis a little bit further. Um, God, in Genesis, uh, a little bit later, Genesis chapter two, uh, a little further down the road, God says to Adam and Eve, when he's gonna create Eve here in a minute in Genesis chapter two, but it says, interestingly enough, God creates man, and then it says to, to man, he says to man, um, hey, you're, you're created now, um, this is before he rested on the seventh day, so it's still the sixth day. You're created, he says. And then he says, um, hey, while you're standing there on the sixth day, why don't you name all these animals? And so God sends a bunch of animals his way. I don't know how he did it, but somehow God created um, all the animals and he said, name them. So he names the animals. I don't know how he did it, but somehow he did it. So he names the animals. And then God says, um, now take a nap. And then the seventh day he took a nap, right? Get this. Man's first requirement was stand there, name some animals, then take a day off. 
That's it. You get that? Stand there, name some animals, take a day out, take a day off. What a God. Come on. Serve that, Jesus' name. Right? We're so weird, right? The other gods out there on the planet, all the other goofy religions that are out there are like, give up your child, sacrifice your this, and give up that, and do this, and do that. You know what our God did? He was just like, oh, I see you right there. I made you. Go ahead and stand there, name some animals, take a nap. Amen! (laughs) And we're like, okay, but what else? He's like, that's it. It's the sixth day. Seventh day, just take a nap. You know what his first requirement was? Take a day off. The first requirement of humanity was to take a day off. We're like, no, seriously, what was it really? Did he have to like go run up a hill? Did he have to go like, you know, climb a mountain? Did he do anything? He's like, no, take a day off. There's something about this thing that we're missing. Okay, go over to Exodus now. Exodus chapter 20. This is during the Ten Commandments. Remember, Moses takes the people, climbs up the hill, Mount Sinai, the whole deal, Ten Commandments. First time it's spoken of is in Exodus 16, but just for funsies, Exodus 20 is the Ten Commandments. And I'm putting it in the context of the Ten Commandments because it's really only mentioned two times. Exodus 16, Exodus 20, and Deuteronomy mentions it. But we're going to talk about Exodus 20 right here. Exodus 20, because I want you to understand it in the context of what it is. Listen to this. Exodus 20, verse 8 says this. Remember, everyone say remember. Remember Remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. We've heard that before. Verse 9 says this, six days a week are set apart for your daily duties, your regular work. That's clear. But the seventh day of, a seventh day of rest is dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any kind of work. This includes you, your sons, your daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock, and your foreigners living among you. I think he was trying to be super clear. For six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. Then he rested on the seventh day. That's why the Lord blessed the Sabbath and set it apart as holy. So what is the Sabbath? Good question. What is the Sabbath? The word Sabbath means to cease, to stop, or to rest. All right? Now, um, I did a little research, found out that there's actually, they unearthed the Dead Sea Scrolls. Some of you know they found those in Qumran, down by the Dead Sea, they're just in the last month, they actually unearthed it, they did a little more research, and they found out the word Sabbath has a little more of a definition than they once knew. So the word Sabbath has more of a definition than to cease, to stop, or to rest. But listen, um, I'm, I want you to write this down. So if you have your phones, or you have a pencil, or whatever it is, you're writing down notes, I want you to write the, the newer definition. This is an additional definition about the Sabbath. I think it's important you get this down. You're not taking anything else to write down. Come on now, this is super important. This is a definition. This is current. This is within the last month. Write this down. So a Sabbath means to cease, to stop, or to rest. This is, this is an additional definition. Here's what it is. To, to, in addition to stopping, ceasing, resting, here, here's the rest of the definition. You ready? Four English words. Put the phone down. May have made that up myself. That's the New Lance translation. Probably not really in there. It's a straight up lie, but I'm telling you, it's the implied translation. Right? Come on now! That's just for me too. That's not just for some of you, it's for all of us. Put the phone down, right? Gosh, I could just let that sit out there for a second. Some of us are breaking out of hives thinking about that. What? Like, I remember in the 80s, right? We were in the 80s. I remember sitting around and they were like, you know, one day in end times, there's going to be the mark of the beast and they're going to put a chip. They're going to put it in our hand or in our heads. And it's going to be like, it's, it's going to be the end times. There's going to be a chip in our hand or in our heads, our foreheads or whatever it is. And it's going to be around. They're going to be able to follow you wherever you go. They're going to be able to know your medical history, your banking history. They're going to know your location everywhere you go. It's going to be in your hand and in your heads. It's going to be everywhere you go. I'll tell you what, everywhere you go, it'll be in your hand and in your heads. And I was like, we're kind of doing that now. 
We don't even need a chip. It's already in our hands and in our heads. We don't even need a chip. Why would they waste their money? What if we took a Sabbath from our phones for a couple hours? What? What if we, what if we Sabbath? But by the way, um, if you went to, to Israel or everywhere you, anywhere you went, by the way, if I say Israel, that's not a bad word. They're still God's people. They're under tremendous attack. It's a tremendous, it's, it, the, the media is such crazy. But I'm telling you right now, besides that, right now, if you were to talk to somebody who understands in, in the Jewish world at all, understands that whole idea of Sabbathing, they call it Shabbat, but it, it, a Sabbath. Um, if, they were, if they were to tell you how they do a Sabbath, they, they have some weird rules about it right now, but we're not talking about that. They, they literally have some weird uh, pendulum swing, um, like you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, all the things. We're, and you might say, Lance, we're Christians. We're under God's grace. So the pendulum swings the other way. We're like, I can do anything on Sabbath I want. And I'm like, yeah, you can. Good on you. But can I tell you, swing the pendulum down to the middle of skosh, huh? Uh, let, let me explain. Just for funsies, listen to this. Go, go, go down to, um, I don't know, go down to the Ten Commandments. Go to Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. I, I, I'm not going to put these on the I'll put these on the screen, but I'm not going to put the whole scripture so um, just remember, I'm going to put these up there quickly, but look them up yourself. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Th this is a little bit of my own paraphrase of the Ten Commandments, but understand. Here's the Ten Commandments. Now keep in mind, these are not the Ten Suggestions. These are the Ten Commandments. These are the commandments of God. These are the ones that he said, um, these are important for you. These are like commandments. These are not like, hey man, if I could really get along, what would I do? These are like the commandments. These are when you don't do it, God's blood, Jesus' blood covers what we don't do, right? The Ten Commandments. Listen to what they are. Number one, have no other gods before him. Yeah. Number two, make no idols to worship God with, right? Number two, don't profane God's name. Number, three, number four, rather, keep the Sabbath day holy or remember the Sabbath day. Listen to this. The last six have to do with relationship to one another. Honor your father and your mother, don't kill each other. Stay in your own bed. <laughs> don't take things that don't belong to you. Tell the truth. Number 10, mow your own lawn. Grass ain't greener over there. Come on now. She might be pretty over there, but stay in your own lawn. Come on now. Do the math, right? Mow your own lawn. Stay where you're supposed to. You get the picture, right? Can I just take you back to number four? Number four, yes, yeah, stay in your own bed as well. Number four, number four says, keep the Sabbath day holy. Can she look at me real quickly? Um, do you know that keeping the Sabbath day holy is in the same vein as don't commit adultery and don't murder? Did you know it's the same list? Take Sabbath day, don't murder. Same level. Did you know that when you don't take Sabbath, it's the same as if you murder? What? Some of us need to repent in Jesus' name. What? We never preach that from pulpits. Just reading it out of my Bible. It's in the Ten Commandments. It's number four. Stay in your own bed. Number four. It's in the same thing. Is it, what is it really, Lance? Come on now. I'm just saying it's in the same list. What if, just for fun, what, what, if, what if they really were the same level? What if, what if God's intention in his rhythm was intentional? For example, I'm jumping off my notes here for a second. But what if, what if, um, God intended on providing for six days and on the sixth day, he decided that he was going to give twice as much food. So in the, in the children of Israel, when they were walking around the desert, he gave five days of provision. On the sixth day, he gave twice as much provision because the seventh day was gonna be, you weren't gonna work for your food. It was gonna be twice as much. On the seventh day, you were supposed to rest 
or shut it down. You were supposed to take a day of rest, right? Amen. Because if you, if you rested on the seventh day, then somehow you would be refreshed and ready to go, right? Do you remember when we went through the book of Ezra? We talked about the book of Ezra and I said this. I said, do you know that they were disobedient for 490 years? And you guys were like, wow, that's a long time. And I said, but in that 490 years, they were taken into captivity for 70 years. And you were like, gosh, that's a weird math problem. And I said, but keep in mind, because every seventh year, they were supposed to let their land go fallow. They were supposed to not use the land. Because the sixth year of every seven years, the sixth year, they had a bumper crop. And on the seventh year, they were supposed to let it go fallow. And then they were supposed to live off of the, 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 the bumper crop of the sixth year on the seventh year and rest her up. Just kind of enjoy a seventh year of rest. They didn't for 490 years worth. God said, well, why aren't you going to do it my way? My rhythms are that you took a year off. They didn't, so for 490 years of disobedience, God took them out of the land for 70 years. God was so committed to this truth that he gave dirt 70 years of Sabbaths back. Did you know that you, my brothers and sisters, are also dirt? We were made from dirt. Did you know that you also require a Sabbath? When we don't do things God's way, here, you know, by the way, um, Pastor Steve got up here a minute ago and he's like, hey, we should tithe. We should tithe. We should trust God with our stuff because tithing equates to trusting. Do you know why we don't take Sabbaths off? It's because we don't trust. Because, because Sabbathing is really trusting. Because back when I grew up, um, early on when I was younger, they used to not have 24-hour stores. We used to go to we used to we used to go to we used to go to the store at five o'clock and the store would be closed. I don't know if you remember that, right? And it'd be like, ah, shoot, the store is closed. It's five o'clock. Nowadays, if you went to a store that was closed at five o'clock, we'd laugh. And we'd go to stores except Chick Fil A, and it'd be closed on Sunday. And remember that? And you'd be like, ah, shoot, it's closed. It's Sunday. Nowadays, right? Here's what happened: is that here's what would happen. We're like, the reason we don't take Sabbaths is because we're a lot like the children of Israel. We get to the sixth year, the sixth day of the week, and here's what we do. We're like, if I work tomorrow on Sunday, I could get ahead of my competition because they're all taking a day off. Here's, here's what would happen. is like they, they would get their sixth year bumper crop and they'd be like, I got a big fat bumper crop, but if I work one extra month, then I'll have the bumper crop plus a month. But if I work 11 months, I'll have a bumper crop plus 11 months. And if I work 12 months, I'll have a bumper crop plus 12 months. I'll bank all of that. It would be awesome. And then I'll lose my marriage and my kids and my house. It'll be amazing. Oh, we didn't factor that in. You see, do you know that most Americans don't actually take their months off that they have for vacation? Most Americans don't take their vacations off at all. Most Americans take their month of vacation or whatever it is, and they use it on surgeries or they use it on divorce relocation or they use it on seeing their kids from other marriages or they use it on other things other than vacations because they got to. Instead of, did you know that, that, that if you did Sabbath thing, you probably wouldn't have to take vacation? What? That's weird. I don't want to try that theory out because I like vacations. But apparently, that's what they say. Could you imagine if you worked for six days and you shut it down? Here's my challenge for you. What if you all were to take this next, whatever it is your day off is, and actually say, okay, kids, dad, mom, whatever it is you got in your home, and you were to say, look, a whole day of Sabbathing for my phone is a little bit too much to bite off. However, three hours. Let's take our phones and put it in a thing, box, basket, whatever. Shut them down. Everyone, we're going to go from huh to huh. We're going to shut them down. Everybody, 
We're all in agreement, whether you like it or not, we're in agreement. And by the way, after the hives, you, you put them in there. You're going to have hives too, trust me. You, we're all just, yeah, but what about the, what about the, everyone's voice will get high in, in that moment, right? But what if you were to just say, hey, just for a minute, well, come on. Yeah, but my, my work, and my, they got they got think but all the things, but just, right? I, I was talking to somebody before church, and they were like, you remember when the phone was hanging on the wall, and you were like, hey, I'm not home, I'm not home. Tell them I'll call them back later, right? It doesn't work anymore, right? And if somebody has your location, you're like, I know right where you are. I know right where you are. I know right where you are, right? So you can't even get away from that. What, what if we actually Sabbathed and you set apart time to say, I'm gonna Sabbath because I wanna learn how to do your rhythm, God? And what if you just started? You, you hear pastors, me or Pastor Steve or Pastor Caleb or whatever, and we say like, let's just give it a shot. Some of you are like, hey, I'm gonna just give, trust God with your finances and just step into it. What if I can't tithe 10%? Well, just start somewhere. And here's what I would say about, about this. You know, obedience is also a process. Just step into it. Just step into it. Start somewhere. And say, God, I'm gonna start somewhere with this Sabbathing thing. What if I'm not good at it, pastor? Well, stop it. You're under grace. Start somewhere. Here's the good news. God is good. He loves you. I, I, I firmly believe, and here's what I would love you to do, is shut down your, your world, whatever it is, for a couple of hours or three hours or four hours, whatever it is, Sabbath, and then intentionally do it. Then go online and post about it. Tell all your friends, I Sabbath for four hours, whatever it is you do, I don't know. Just tell them, like, God met us there. And what do you do during that time? Can I just tell you this? Remember a couple of things, the past, the present, and the future. The, the past, what about the past? Well, yesterday, Right? You might not know anything, but at least you could say like yesterday, um, made it through yesterday, that's good news. I mean, I liked it, but I made it through yesterday. Yesterday was good. So somehow yesterday showed up. Uh, you were good then, God. At least talk about that with each other. Now, I'm not suggesting that you're gonna, by the way, as soon as you start obedience, you're gonna fight with each other. Chances are likely every time you step out in obedience, you're gonna argue with each other. So, so try to commit not to, but you probably will. Anytime we've tried to do that as a family, we're gonna Sabbath, we usually fight. Our biggest fights were when we tried to do stuff like that. Don't look at me like that. Come on, you try to do a spiritual thing and then the enemy steps in, right? So, so just remember the past, present, and the future. Step into something like that. Present, what do you got? The person across from you is at least looking at you in the nose and just at least tell them, like you blink all by yourself really well. Just tell them something good. You're blinking. That's all I got. Good for you. You're blinking. I mean, maybe that's all you got. Right? And the future. What do you got? Got some, he's in the future. Hopefully you'll be there too. You know, so Jeremiah 29, 11. God's got a plan. Let me leave you with this last thing. Listen, no one can Sabbath for you. Yes. You're the only one that can do it. You can't Sabbath for your wife. Your wife can't Sabbath for you. You can't Sabbath for your kids. You can only Sabbath for you. You're the only one who's gonna stand before Jesus and he's gonna say, hey, it was June 9th. I told Lance to talk to you about Sabbathing. How'd you do with that? And here's what you can't say. Well, I told my husband and he didn't do it. You can't say, well, I told my wife and my kid didn't do it. They, you know what? We tried and it didn't work. He's gonna say, but how'd you do? Come on. No one can Sabbath for you. Only you can remember. Only you can remember what you need to remember. So you got to remember stuff. And number three is this: obey or not to obey. That's the question, right? You get to choose to obey what you want to obey. You get to decide. Amen. So I want to pray with you real quick. You're just sitting there. Um, I think some of us need to repent. Like some of us need to ask God for forgiveness because we've treated the Sabbath as unholy. It's been unholy. It's just been another day. Some of us have taken the Sabbath and just turned it into a seventh day. It's not been set apart. So Jesus, maybe that's me, maybe that's these people, maybe that's us. Right now, just as you're sitting here before the Lord, if you have not treated the Sabbath, the, the, 
the Sabbath holy, not setting it apart, it just becoming another day for another day. And maybe you just need to say, Jesus, will you forgive me? I don't wanna bring that on me. I don't wanna bring that on my family. Just forgive me for not setting it apart as holy. Go ahead, just right now, just between you and him. If you need to ask him for forgiveness, then do it. Forgive me, Jesus. I need a set apart time to just be with you. And right now, just as you're quietly before him, make a decision of what you're gonna do. Maybe this next week, I'm gonna set aside three hours or four hours. I'm gonna Sabbath somehow. I'm gonna set aside some time away from my computer, my work, with my family, just somehow, just to set aside some time. Just to be alone with you, God. Just to stop. And Jesus, I trust that you're gonna meet me there. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So, you know, um, I, there's a lot of research you can do. I, I, when I was working on this message, you could go online. I literally could have, I could have given you 23 things to do on a Sabbath, which is so counterintuitive because it's all about not doing things, right? And so can I just tell you this? Don't lose your mind. If you wanna go out and mow your lawn or work in your garden on the Sabbath, do that. I, I mean, don't get weird. Just don't over, just don't get weird. Right, don't, don't get weird. That's what I would say. Just spend some time, if you can, doing something other than what you would normally do, but do it with someone else. It'd be nice if he was with your family, right? And in my opinion, just try to not let it include a, a screen. Amen? That's usually what throws most of us off, is a screen. So just try to remove that portion of it from your life. <laughs> If you could just Sabbath from a screen, I think most of us would be 99% better. Amen? Amen? All right, next week is Father's Day. Um, back in 2021, uh, I took a trip. Uh, I got in a car and my father passed away a little before that. Uh, I took a trip in a car down to, I flew down to New Mexico where his, where his ashes were. And um, he grew up in uh, Browning, Montana. It was a 20 hour trip. I, I, put, I put his ashes in the car with me and I took a trip in a car for 20 hours and had a conversation. Next weekend, uh, I'm gonna do a sermon called The Drive. I'm gonna talk to you about that conversation I had with my dad and his remains. Uh, it, was, it was really healing for me. So um, will you come next week? I wanna share a little bit about my life and my journey and how God healed some places in my life. So come for Father's Day, it'll be a lot of fun and healing for you too, hopefully. Anyway, God bless you. Why don't you stand up? Have a great afternoon. Give someone a hug. Uh, bless you today. Sabbath it up. Amen. How's Amy?